guys, physics in the flesh is back, circular motion problems. Necessity of friction on incline, part one. A 1200 kilogram car rounds a curve of radius 65 meters banked at an angle of 12 degrees. If the car is traveling at 93 kilometers per hour, will a friction force be required? If so, how much and in what direction? So we've got two scenarios we're dealing with here. One in which there is no friction, one in which there is. Okay, so this video, number 82, deals with no friction to see if that is correct. Okay, um, video number 83 is going to deal with friction. So let's get started here. Okay, so with no friction, I'm going to go ahead and draw my free body diagram. Okay, so I've got my bank. I've got the car. And let's start drawing the forces in here. Okay, so I've got my gravitational force going straight down. And I've got my normal force perpendicular to the road. And that's it, right? There's no friction. So that's all of the forces you have. Now, the normal force, I'm going to take that and break it up into components, which means I need to establish a coordinate system. I'm going to let x be to the right and positive. Up is going to be y positive. Okay, so I can break up fn into its y components and its x components. So there's my fnx and here's my fn y. Those two meet at a right angle. Okay, so just like in the previous problem, I am given a speed in kilometers per hour. I need to convert that to meters per second. Okay, so let's do that first. Um, yeah, let's do it over here. 93 kilometers per hour. Remember the way you convert units, I'm converting two here, kilometers and hours. Multiply by one twice. Next step, replace the ones with empty fractions okay so there you go empty fractions now to get rid of the kilometers i put kilometers down here i'm trying to get meters okay what ratio of meters to kilometers equals one okay so one kilometer is a thousand meters so that gets rid of the km okay for the hours i need to get rid of it so i put hours up here i'm trying to get seconds that goes down here Okay, one hour is 3,600 seconds. So even though they look different, this is still one, and this here is still one. So I haven't changed the value. It's still worth 93 kilometers per hour. The only difference is now the kilometers cancel and the hours cancel, so I'm left with meters per second. So you do 93 times 1,000 divided by 3,600, which equals 25.8 meters per second. So there's your speed. Okay, now given the speed, I want to see if friction isn't required. So what I'm going to do, because this car is going around a bank, I'm going to figure out what the centripetal force of this car is. Going at that speed, having that mass, the radius of the curve being that, what's the centripetal force that's going to act on the car? And then I'm going to see, okay, is FNX enough to compensate for it, right? Is, it, is that all of it? If it's just FNX? Okay, so my next task is to find the centripetal force. So Fc is equal to mv squared over r. Okay, so let's plug in our values. The mass is 1,200 kilograms. My speed is 25.8 meters per second. That gets squared and divided by the radius of the curve, 65 meters. Okay, when you do that, you're going to get that the centripetal force equals 12,288.74 newtons. Okay, so there's that. Now, like I said, if no friction is required, then this Fc has to be equal to Fnx because with the no friction, this is the only force pointing in the center pointing direction. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to find Fnx. Fnx is equal to Fn sine theta. Okay, so where's my theta coming from? Okay, this angle theta, which is the banking angle, that's the same angle you've got right up there. Okay, you've got theta. Okay, so f and x is fn sine theta. Um, now, here's the thing, what's fn? I'm not given that. Okay, because I'm not given that, I cannot assume it's equal to fg because you see they're going in opposite directions. Not opposite, but they're going in different directions. So I have to figure out what fn is. In order to do that, I'm gonna do Newton's second law in the y direction. Okay, and on, I'll be honest, it's not that much work. I'm just gonna squeeze it here on the right. So I'm gonna do F net y, and we know the net force in the y direction is zero, as it has been with a lot of these problems. 
because the car's not bobbing up and down. Okay, so in the y direction, I've got f and y, and I've got fg. This is in the positive, that's in the negative. So we get f and y minus fg equals zero. So f and y is equal to fg, right? So I'm gonna bring the fg over to the right, and I'm gonna replace f and y with an expression. f and y is fn times cosine theta. So fn cos theta equals mg. Therefore, fn is equal to mg over cos theta. And that's what I'm going to use to plug in up there, OK? So fnx is equal to bracket mg over cos theta times sine theta. OK, so hopefully you see sine theta over cos theta is tangent. OK, but in the interest of space, I'm just going to plug in the numbers as I have them. OK, so 1,200 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times sine of the angle, which is 12 degrees. So sorry, I know it's getting a little bit messy there. Sine of 12 divided by cosine 12 degrees. <clears throat> when you calculate that, we get the normal force in the x direction, and it is going to be equal to 2,499.665 newtons. Okay, so take a look at that for a sec. Okay, here's our centripetal force. It's almost 12 and a half thousand. My normal force in the x direction is almost two and a half thousand. Considerably, considerably less. Okay, so that means there has to be another force compensating, okay, to add up with this to become the centripetal force. Therefore, it does not make sense that there is no friction because there is a huge force acting on the car and only this much of it comes from the normal force. So there's got to be friction. So some of you might be thinking, wow, the video is over. I'm just going to subtract the two. I'm going to get my friction force. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way because remember here when we figured out what the normal force was to plug into this expression, we did that assuming only two vertical forces, normal force in the y direction, gravity in the y direction. However, if you have friction now going down the incline, it also has a y component. So you have to use that in your calculation, which is going to change fn, which is going to change your fnx. All right, guys, so I'm going to end that video there. There is part one done. Clearly, we do need friction. Um, so stay tuned for video number 83, Necessity of Friction on Banked Curve, part two, to see the calculation done with friction. Okay, so stay tuned for that, guys. Be sure to click that like button, by the way, and subscribe to Physics in the Flesh if you haven't already done so, so you can always catch the latest video that I post every weekday at 12 noon.